What's going on everybody, this is Telemachus and you're watching a walkthrough for wide, retired, hack the box talents of the reverse engineering section and super easy in difficulty. You can download the necessary files to play the talents by clicking download files. I have already done it, so let's begin. There are two files in this talents, a binary and something that looks like a database dump, this db.ex. This challenge can actually be solved almost instantly by running strings with a specified encoding against the binary named wide. But in order to learn as much as we can out of this challenge, I'm going to take the long road here and actually decompile the binary and we will check the easy solution at the end. Let's run file on wide, get some info about this binary. It's an elf file, 64 bit, so I guess, I guess we can run it on this system. If we just execute it, it says, hey, users, you're supposed to parse db.exe, so let's let's do that, see where it takes us. And if we run it with the file, we get this message, welcome user, this weird name, to the widely inflated dimension editor, serving your pocket dimension storage needs since some crazy age, displaying dimensions, and we see names, code, some random words, I think, encrypted, and we have some sign here maybe it means that this is probably en encrypted and it's asking for our input which dimension would you like to examine and if you parse strings uh you get this message all the time but if you parse numbers you get some different entries and uh you could i guess while playing this to examine how far you can go you can just you know parse some great range to see where it ends i guess the options are not infinite you know so the option was invalid, if I do 10, the option is still invalid, uh, 9, 8, 7, and here we see our home dimension, let's go 6, and we have this question, the entry is encrypted, please enter your wide decryption key, and I guess the solution, it's easy to assume that here you have to pass some key that you can discover probably by reverse engineering this, and uh, it is supposed to, I guess, drop the flag, the key was incorrect, this was something random, so let's just decompile this file and see where it takes us. I'm not going to run strings or hex dump or anything like that right now. Let's analyze the file with Jidra, the legendary reverse engineering framework. In order to use Jidra, you need to go to the official repository and uh, download and install the Java development kit and just download the content of this repository, run the appropriate Jidra binary and that's it. If you're running Jidra for the first time, you will probably need to create a project and uh, then you will have a folder here. I named this one Hack the Box and uh, after that we can drag and drop wide the binary in here. It will load some information immediately about it and here we have even a greater analysis that it is. Uh, the compiler was probably GCC, so it's probably a C program. Yep, so let's hit OK. And now we can double click on wide and Jidra will analyze it. You can just leave the default options or you can mess around if you want. Whatever, I, I'm just going to analyze it with whatever Jidra has as default. And here we have the listing of functions and uh, instructions and everything about this binary. And I'm going to search for main, which is common in C and C++ programs. And I'm just going to open it here. I'm going to close the listing actually. I don't think we're going to need it. Sometimes Jidra will fail to recognize the signature of functions and variable type definitions. In that case, it will mark those objects as undefined. Uh, you can though try to identify a function signature by analyzing the code and change it by right clicking on an object and selecting edit function signature. In this case, for example, the main has been characterized as undefined and we can see it takes two arguments, one int and another one undefined some pointer. And uh, if we check this, this first if statement, it checks if param1, the int, is less than 2. And if it is, it exits the program. So I guess it checks if it takes one argument because uh, one would be also the name of this uh, program. And uh, if we scroll to the end, we can see that the return type is int because this function returns 0. So doesn't this remind you of... Uh, the classic way to pass uh, command line arguments in C or C++ programs like int and usually this is called um, argc which is the arguments count and this is usually a char pointer to pointer and it's usually it usually has the name of arg vector 
And if we click OK here, we can see that the code adjusted to this. And it's kind of safe to assume that this is a correct assumption. And with that said, let's see what it is doing. Uh, we already discussed about this if statement. It checks the argument count. If it is, if it has one argument, it expects to find the db.ex. I guess if that's not the case, the program exits and prints the usage. Hey, and the pointer as it is parsed here in printf to be you know substituted with with this uh, symbol here the syntax uh this is the name of the program wide and uh if we haven't done this error if I'm, if we haven't caused this error then it has, it prints welcome user with this user name this weird thing to the widely inflated dimension editor okay the, the things we saw and then it, it starts a stream which is a pointer to file structure um it tries to open the file we parsed, the path, and if it fails, this is it checks if uh, if uh, f open returns a null pointer, which would mean that this operation failed. It prints, hey, we, I didn't make it, whatever, and exits. So if this doesn't happen, it continues to read this file. It checks the where's the end of the file and. Uh, I guess reads it uh, through blocks of this size and allocates uh, memory to save the content of the file. It reads it, closes the file, and then prints, hey, displaying dimensions, name, code, encrypted, and then I guess with this loop it prints the content of uh, the file. I guess that's what's going on. And after all this has been printed, it runs this uh, function menu, and let's go to this we have a message from jidra it says warning could not reconcile some variable overlaps we, we see a lot of undefined um, variables here we have void menu that takes two arguments let's scroll down we enter some while some endless loop i guess remember this is the part that was asking us which dimension would you like to examine and uh, I guess there's some kind of something like a case uh, concept to choose of all these options that this program appears to have. And if we scroll to the end, we can see the entry is encrypted. It's this point that, hey, if we put six, we, we hit this encrypted section. It says the entry is encrypted. Please enter your wide decryption key. And it's, re it's, reading, it's reading from uh, the standard input to save what we pass in local underscore C8. And here is where the interesting part, the source is happening. Actually, you can already see the key. It's uh, hard coded here, but it's, it's uh, a wide uh, string. We will talk about this. It's uh, basically, it uh, stores our input in local underscore C8 and then uses uh, multi bytes to wide characters to transform this uh, string into wide type into the white type and then it compares white characters compare it uses this function that compares local 1c8 meaning the the variable that holds our input with another wide string which is the password and if it is zero which means that they are the same it uh, proceeds to decrypt i guess and print the the flag so let's try it see if it works going to copy this and let's run wide again well of course we need to pass the db we would like to examine six and we will enter this the decryption key and we have the flag and here's how you can solve this immediately with strings you can just do strings um wide and expect to find the super secret password in here even if i grab for example sub just to to see if it, it's in the results we won't find it this way let's check out the strings help message and we can see we have this option does e encoding and we can select the character size and we saw that the the super secret this uh, string was actually declared as a, a wide type which is uh two to four i think in most platforms uh bytes for each character so it, we need to, to choose does e with one of these two options which i guess represent white characters and if we do strings does e l for example 
on wide and if I grab uh, sub you will see that the, the secret key is actually there.